Hello everyone and welcome to another Tuesday Brews Day Deck Tech. I'm Tacey Snackies and this time we're not going over Popper. We're going over another MTG Arena deck, but not Popper because it's currently not in season right now. However, we are playing a similarly bad deck, but uh, this time we're playing a budget version of a deck. And my version of budget was a challenge that I imposed on myself to use only four rares as the maximum. And if you can't tell at the list already, my four rares are Tempest Shin and the rest are uncommons and uncommons. And as you can see in the list here, it is a blue-white flyers deck built around the card Favorable Wins. So our one-drop flyers here, Healer's Hawk, you know it's a good target for stuff like Curious Obsession. So is Siren Storm Tamer. They're great one, or turn one plays to lead into a turn two Stormfleet area list, so that way we can make that a turn three, or we could play a Night Veil Sprite, slam that with a Curious Obsession, because Curious Obsession is just going to be drawing us cards most of the time because all of our creatures in this deck are evasive. Or you could finish up the 2 drop slot with Skyblade of the Legion on your turn 2, which is pretty decent on its own. It can avoid smaller removal like Dead Weights, Moment of Cravings, and Fungal Infections, and the like. And then uh, we play something like Favorable Wins, more or less on like turns uh, 4 maybe five because a lot of time you want your turn one two and three to set up some sort of board state so that way we can pressure our opponent into being able to play something like favorable wins to close the game out and in order to help clear stuff off the board so that way we can keep pressuring our opponents we have stuff like blink of an eye and we have unexplained disappearance and they're just good tempo cards to keep our opponents off of uh, sizable threats and then we also have Con uh, Conclave Tribunal because it's synergistic with us spamming the board with creatures. And then we are finishing the game off here with stuff like Tempest Jin. I think th that's all the creatures. I don't think I skipped over any others. But yeah, Tempest Jin here is a pretty solid Bonnie on its own. Three mana for a 4-4, four, 3-4, four, 5-4. Four, four. The list goes on. It could be a 6-5 with a favorable wins on the field. Or you could put a Curious Obsession. The sky's the fucking limit. But um, for our lands, we have two plains, 16 islands, and four meandering rivers. Of course, you know, if you have the Glacial Fortresses, go ahead and play those. But I wanted to build this deck not only just for the challenge, but also to build a list for something like Dovin Bane, which I think he's really interesting, and I kind of wanted to build a blue-white aggro list. And if I were to build this deck and redeem some Mythic Wild cards in this build, I'd probably want to put in the Hollowed Fountains, the Glacial Fortresses, and cut these Tempest Gens here for Dovin Bonds. And honestly, I don't think I would change anything else to the list. I might actually add more Skyblade of the Legion. This card is super solid in my testing so far. If your opponent wants to waste a Lightning Strike or a Lava Coil on it, by all means do so because it's a 1-3 flyer like it's really innocuous on its own but when you get it suited up with what our deck's trying to do it can become quite an encumbering threat pretty quickly anyways my name is tasty snackies i hope you all enjoy the gameplay i have for this deck i'll catch you on the flip side before the game starts, I do want to make this perfectly clear that this is a very much so a casual deck meant to be played in the casual queues. If you want to go ahead and try this out on the ladder, by all means, please do so. I'm probably going to be trying out different variations of this build with like History of Benalia and stuff like that in the ladder. But for the most part, this build that I'm showcasing in specific is meant to just play against the casual decks and just run over those guys. Anyways, I hope you all enjoy the gameplay. All right, so this gameplay is going to be a little bit different than what you may be used to. I filmed six or seven games, I can't remember right now, but I also chopped them up so they're really fast paced. We're going to blow through all of them in like 18 minutes, and I'm just going to casually, nonchalantly talk over them. So this first game here, I decided to keep onto this hand. A lot of the times, I will keep a tapped meandering river land and set up my turns with like a Healer's Hawk and a Siren Storm Tamer, because most of the time, as I figured out while playing this deck, uh, Favorable Wins is more or less a turn four or five card. Most of the time, your turns one, two, and three, you need to play some sort of threat and like maybe a way to protect it. And I'm leaving myself a bit open, but I know that I'm playing against uh, Merfolk here, so a lot of times they don't have interaction for my threats. Most of the time they're just trying to jam stuff to get value out of their creatures and try to outpace me. But a lot of the times I'm playing very evasive creatures that can outrun them. So we're going to just go ahead and play favorable wins here on turn 3 and bash in for 4, get our value in. 
And then our opponent here plays an island. Then they play a Deep Root Waters, which I find to be interesting in a lot of the decks here. I don't think Deep Root Waters is the right call for a lot of these decks, but that's personal opinion. Um, I put a Curious Obsession on Siren, Siren Storm Tamer when I should have put it on the Healer's Hawk in hindsight, but whatever. Um, I do draw another Curious Obsession anyways, and if I don't... Yeah, I play the Tempest Gen first, so that way I can get the Curious Obsession next turn while also leaving up an Unexplained Disappearance if I need it. My opponent here then plays a Tapped Land and then plays a Jungleborn Pioneer, getting a trigger off Deep Root Waters, which means now they have a pretty substantial board and then they so <laughs> they just go ahead and give up to me because i'm just going to outrace them so this next game here same concept le uh, leading off with a tapped land so that way i can get my blue with the healer's hawk most of the time in arena keeping a two land hand is efficient most of the time uh, I actually lead off with the Skyblade Legion here. It's the better move anyway because I'm playing against Black and I was trying to anticipate a Deadweight or a Neg 2 removal. So we're just going to go ahead and play an Island here, slap it on a Skyblade of the Legion, get in some damage, and then I think I play a Stormfleet Aerialist after that. Yeah, so they go ahead and play a Fungal Infection. If I would have let off with Healer's Hawk, then that would have been a sad day for me. So we go ahead and draw our card here. And they... Should have held on to that fungal infection, but whatever. So now we got a 2-3 and a 2-4 and drawn some cards. We're playing against a black-green spores deck. And again, this is the same story against merfolk decks. We can just run over them pretty competently. So we're just going to go ahead and bash in the air, get them in the face, you know, as we do. Then we slam down a healer's hawk. And... Then we decide to go ahead and grow our Stormfleet Aerialist. Again, this is a card that I should have thrown on Healer's Hawk in hindsight, but whatever, I'm a bad player. They cast a Thalid Omnivore, which is a pretty beefy boy, and uh, we're just going to go ahead and bounce it to their hand, so that way we time walk them for this turn effectively. Say, no, no, no thank you. Get out of here. Get rid of that island, because we don't need it. And then we go ahead and draw another Night Veil Sprite. And this leads to a very interesting way of deciding how I want to go about with my turn here. And draw my two cards, make sure that I don't want to lead off with bad threats. And we do draw a Tempest Gin, which makes our turn significantly easier to play. Because then we just go ahead and play Tempest Gin. And then we lead off with another Night Veil Sprite. And then we just pressure them out this whole next turn with Lethal. So our opponent plays Tender Shoot Dryad, not realizing that it's lethal. Then they pass the turn, and I think, or they attack, and then once they pass the turn, after I eat their 2-2 blocker, then they uh, concede immediately afterwards. I don't know if maybe they were trying to get their dailies online or whatever. All right, so for this next hand, I decide to keep, because we have a pretty solid turn 2, turn 3, and turn 4. If... It doesn't matter if we get a tap land or not, but getting another third island is pretty clutch in this situation because of the Tempest Gin and turn three slapping an obsession on the sprite while also playing an aerialist against a deck like Merfolk is pretty damn sweet. So we're just going to go ahead and smack them for a two in the air, dig a little deep, and we happen to find another Tempest Gin, which is very sweet because... I mean, if we're going to go overboard, we're going to go super overboard against a low-to-the-ground deck. So we play a Stormfleet Aerialist. We got some 2-3s. We're in a good position. Then they go ahead and blink of an eye our Night Veil Sprite, which slows us down considerably, but it's okay. We do have another Stormfleet Aerialist, so we're just going to go ahead and get the bonus off of that. Oh, wait, no, we played the Tempest Gin instead. Okay, yeah, that was the better play anyways. So they play a Jungleborn Pioneer. It's a beefy boy for certain, but our Tempest Gin isn't an even beefier boy, especially when we get two of them on the board. And then our opponent Blink of an Eyes our card back to our hand, which slows us down, and they get in for a decent chunk of damage. So then we draw an Island, play that, play a Favorable Winds to make our board a little bit more impressive, swing in, get that Raid bonus, so that way we can play a beefy Stormfleet Aerialist. Our opponent then concedes to that. So this next hand we keep three lander, so that way we can lead off with the Siren Storm Tamer, hit him for some damage, and then lead off with another Stormfleet Aerialist. Our opponent plays a mountain, 
and then they play a get to lava runner so it makes me think that we're playing some sort of burn deck or aggro deck here in the casual queues which you know interesting people playing tier decks in the casual queues what's new so we lead off with the Stormfleet area list and if they want to waste a lightning strike on it then we're more than happy for them to do so and then they go ahead and do not do so so we go ahead and get our attacks in play another land get another Stormfleet area list online so now they have two cards that they need to lightning strike in order to deal with so our opponent plays a land and another or they play a gutter snipe which is a very interesting card to tap out for on turn three then we go ahead and bash them in the air for five more damage bring them down to 11 and then we go ahead and play a night veil sprite pass the turn over to our opponent opponent plays a land and then they hit us with a risk factor which of course in this situation we're just going to take the damage because we're out racing them and it doesn't really matter i really don't want them to draw three cards our opponent then plays a second get to lava runner so they really need more instants and sorceries in their graveyard otherwise we're just going to be beating them in pretty quickly and we are leaving conclave tribunal as backup to get rid of the gutter snipe just in case they spill like three or four spells in a single turn and just sneak out a win against us pass it to our opponent's turn and then they cast risk factor from the graveyard discarding uh the black uh drain life card so they're playing some weird black red burn deck so it makes sense with the gutter snipes in the build and then they play another get to lava runner and then at this point they go ahead and hit us for two damage but again we're just gonna race them out and they concede this next game we keep this hand it's kind of janky we don't have a white source but we do have a one two and three play so we lead off with siren storm tamer against the black green deck they play another tap land with a stitcher supplier so it's a graveyard based deck so we might be expecting some molder hulks in the future Go ahead and hit him for one in the air and then get us another two three in the air so that way we can just get that evasive damage through and try to outrace our opponents before they can do anything degenerate our opponent plays a merfolk branch walker gets their value off of it leading a dead weight on the top of the library and this card is a issue for me so i need to block and get that dead weight in the graveyard so that way they don't throw it on my siren storm tamer We go ahead and draw into a healer's hawk which kind of sucks because you know we didn't get another white source but we will play our tempest Jin here which we were going to play on curve regardless if we got a white source anyways opponent plays a tapped land then they play another stitcher supplier get more stuff in the graveyard pass the turn over to us we jam another island hit him in the air for seven damage bring him down to nine put him on a turn uh two turn clock with a unexplained disappearance for backup just in case they try to get tricky with us they do play a Plague Crafter, which forces us to sacrifice our Siren Storm Tamer. They sacrifice their supplier, get more stuff in the yard. Hit us for three, down to 17. Pass it over to us. Then we get a Meandering River, so thankfully we get a White Source. And then we just go ahead and bash them for six more in the air, leaving them on a one-turn clock. Our opponent plays a Ravenous Chupacabra. And then on the ETB trigger them targeting Tempest Jin, we go ahead and bounce our Tempest Jin back to our hand with Unexplained Disappearance, surveilling a Stormfleet Error List on top so that way we can maintain board presence in this next turn and take care of them. Opponent hits us for six, but that's fine because we're just going to go ahead and smack them for two in the air, drive them down to one, then we play a Tempest Jin and a Stormfleet Area List with the Raid Trigger online, so that way our board is in a pretty healthy position. Unless our opponent has two removal spells or three removal spells, they're going to die in this situation. And they have a Vraska Golgari Queen, which is removal, it's just not good enough. And they blow up our Tempest Jin, probably for their dailies or whatever, and then pass it over to us because, well, it's lethal. So we go ahead and keep this opening hand so that way we can lead off with the Siren Storm Tamer and then next turn play a tapped land and slap a Curious Obsession on our Storm Tamer. Our opponent here plays an opt which makes us believe that they're playing some sort of like maybe mono blue aggro which is the most common deck that scry or opt is played in most of the time
Our opponent plays a chart, of course, getting some stuff in their graveyard. At this point, we saw the Art Collect Phoenix go into the graveyard, so now that we have to race them, anticipating that this is a blue-red Phoenix deck and they can just kill us out of nowhere. Thankfully, we are playing Flyers, so we have a way of blocking just a sudden amount of damage, and we go ahead and draw a card off of the Curious Obsession. Our opponent, on their turn three, Goes ahead and plays a Tormenting Voice, getting rid of a Warlord's Fury and drawing two cards, and then another Opt. So they don't get the Art Light Phoenix trigger out of it, sadly. We go ahead and beat our opponent in the air for two more, draw another card. So we go ahead and slap down a Meandering River, and then we leave back a blink of an eye just in case they spam out anything during this next turn. And our opponent plays a Lava Coil, targeting our Storm Tamer at this point. That's fine. We can just let it die. We already got our value out of it. And then we play an Island here and a Night Veil Sprite, uh, leaving up Blink of an Eye to bounce any uh, threats that may be coming our way during this next turn. They do play Crackling Drake, which is fine. We don't want to bounce it because we don't want them to draw a card. So instead of uh, blindly attacking into the Crackling Drake or sacrificing an attack for mana, we're just going to go ahead and use the Night Veil Sprite to convoke Conclave Tribunal while also leaving up Blink of an Eye. Our opponent plays a Search for Escanta, which is fine. We can let that resolve. Then they do play an Enigma Drake, which at this point we are going to bounce it back to their hand. So then it passes back to our turn, and we get a Stormfleet Aerialist, and this is going to be a super spicy turn, and we're going to smack our opponent for three in the air, all while all the while leaving up a Stormfleet Aerialist. So it's a pretty decent position, even though I believe that I'm still playing against the Arcolite Phoenix deck, even though I saw a couple Drakes. It's still a good idea to play the Aerialist just in case we get a hasty threat out on the field. Then our opponent plays a niv mizzet Perrin, which kind of puts a break on the game, except for the fact that we do have two spells that work perfectly against it. Yeah, they do get to draw cards, but for the most part, our opponent is just probably going to be tapping out to play niv mizzet so most of the time it's fine if we just keep bouncing them, just so long as we can keep pegging our opponents down, because this turn we're going to swing at them for seven, and if we can bounce the niv mizzet again and they tap out for it, then that's lethal, so... That's the most ideal spot in this situation. And then we go ahead and smack our opponent at 4-7, dragging them down to 4. <clears throat> we get another Stormfleet Aerialist on top, and we leave it just in case we need another evasive threat. Oh no, I play the Night Veil Sprite. Interesting. I probably would have left up the Unexplained Disappearance now that in hindsight, but whatever. I think I was just trying to get lethal damage through just in case our opponent was just going to play removal that's right okay that's why i did it just in case they were going to play removal and we weren't going to be able to get lethal through because our opponent is just going to block the stormfleet aerialist or so they think and then we'll just unexplain disappearance niv miss it back to their hand and then swing in for lethal so i sh probably should have just given them the ggs but I didn't feel like being... Oh, I did. <laughs> yeah, I can be a bit overconfident at times. But in this situation, there was no way of them recovering. Go ahead and leave another Stormfleet Aerialist on top, because why not? And then our opponent goes ahead and concedes. So for this next hand, it's really awkward, but I decide to keep it just because we have the Sprite, and we have the Obsession, and we can dig to find a white source... And so, yeah, we go ahead and play against Merfolk again, which is another interesting matchup. And we keep drawing lands, which is exactly what we want in this situation. Like, I, d I don't know about you, but drawing a bunch of islands when you need a white source, it's super clutch. So our opponent plays a Deep Root Waters, and we draw another white card, which is very, very fun. At this point, we can finally start digging a little bit deeper to help find our white sources. But we find a Siren Storm Tamer, keep it on top, so that way we can leave another blocker up here just in case we need to. While also leaving up the Siren Storm Tamer's ability just in case they got anything tricky like a blink of an eye. So then our opponent plays a Deep Root Elite with the Deep Root Waters, and it gets pretty scary here because either they could slap it on the unblockable creature or they could put it on the hexproof creature. 
but this opponent here decides that they're going to put all of their bonuses on unblockable creatures, which is pretty good in this situation. But if we can draw a removal, all of that overabundance in one creature can hurt them negatively. And it does by us drawing an unexplained disappearance. So we go ahead and draw another card off of Night Veil Sprite, getting another Curious Obsession. We go ahead and slap that on a Siren Storm Tamer, make it a little bit bigger while also leaving up unexplained disappearance behind. Opponent swings in for 5 damage. We go ahead and bounce their River Sneak back to their hand. <coughs> Leaving up a Tempest Gin on top. We go ahead and Chump Block one of the 1-1s one -ones and take a little scratch. Then comes back to us. We slam another Island and then we slam a couple damage into our opponent. See what we draw into. We get another Unexplained Disappearance which is very clutch in this situation knowing our opponent is just going to overextend into the unblockable creature. So then we play a Tempest Gin as a nice little 5-4 blocker and then we leave up Unexplained Disappearance to punish our opponents. So our opponent plays a River Sneak. They get all their triggers online. As expected they slap it all on the unblockable creature to try and take us out in two to three turns when in hindsight they should have done it on the hexproof creatures but whatever so we go ahead and punish our opponent for their sins we surveil they replay the card again get some more beefy dudes that's fine whatever river sneak is big and beefy but we can outrace the ever-living fuck out of them and we draw another card. We draw two more cards. I should say not another card. We get two more Tempest Gins and a Blink of an Eye. So we go ahead and slam down another blocker. Leave up Blink of an Eye in case our opponent tries to overextend again. They attack with everything. We bounce the 3-3 three, three unblockable back to their hand. Leaving up uh, a blocker to take out the Deep Root Elite. Opponent tickles us down to five. We give each other the GG's. And then the opponent concedes to us. Anyways, that's the deck for you all. It's super fun to pilot, not the most highly tuned list or probably the best in the overall meta. But if you got like a few pennies to spare on some dirt cheap uncommons and rares because Tempest Gin is somewhat affordable in this format, then I'd suggest giving it a shot, especially in Arena if you incidentally already have a bunch of these cards in your collection. Anyways, as always, my name's Tasty Snackies. You all have been wonderful, and I'll catch you on the flip side. Thanks for watching! Be sure to check out our playlist of popper content here and also our other MTG videos here. Don't forget to subscribe and to also hit that bell icon so you get notified every time we release content.